We are back yet again with the Thick Men Inc. podcast if you are Week 12 predictions. And since we were busy making fun of the British the past few days, we're not going to be able to get you the Thursday predictions, but just know we would have gotten them all right if we did. On to the Sunday games. And in a rematch of Super Bowl 50, we've got the Carolina Panthers at home in Charlotte taking on Broncos country. And I think this game is going to go similarly to how that Super Bowl went. The Carolina Panthers are a bad team. They've got quarterback issues, they've got offensive line issues, their defense struggles, but the Broncos offense is completely inept thanks to Russell Wilson not being that guy. But the Broncos defense is truly elite, so much like Super Bowl 50, they're going to swarm over the Panthers, it's going to be a low scoring affair, and Mr. Unlimited is going to get himself another win. It's just going to be a dull, boring game. I don't want to watch this game too much. I don't think many fans at home want to watch this game. What do you think, Dresden? How's this game going to go? Well, pretty sad. Broncos fans, they, they must be at tears at this point that we're even contemplating the fact that the Panthers have a chance at winning this game. When you take a look at the Panthers quarterback situation this year, they're on their third starter after now benching Baker Mayfield. P.J. Walker isn't playing. Sam Darnold is getting his first start of the season. Didn't go too well last year. And they're playing the Broncos, who have Russell Wilson, has been in MVP conversations over the years, has won a Super Bowl, been to another Super Bowl, yet we are still contemplating whether or not the Broncos are going to win this game. And I do think they're going to pull out the win because their defense is elite. I feel bad for their defense at this point because I think they would be first in the NFL and everything if their offense was able to score points and stay on the field to give their defense a break. The Broncos defense has only given up more than 20 points two times this season against the Raiders both times who we know have all of those elite high-end offensive weapons. So I do think the Broncos are going to win. Their defense is too good, especially going against Sam Darnold in his first start of the season. I want to briefly refute you. Russell Wilson has never been in an MVP conversation past week eight, so let's not get things mixed up with that. But the one way the Carolina Panthers do win, and Sam Darnold is very proficient, this is actually insane how he does it so frequently. He could rip off like a 60-yard run out of just nowhere. He's an athletic freak. He's trunk. He can move well, and he's got that deceptive white man speed. So if there's anything the Panthers can do to stay in the game, it's let Sam Darnold get about 10, 15 rush tips. Will they do it? I don't think so, but that's the only plausible chance Carolina has. You forgot to say he's also a coastal kid. A big, trunky coastal California. Comes from a good family. All the good stuff like that, man. <laughs> Panthers country, let's roar. On to the lovely city of Cleveland, where the surging Tampa Bay Buccaneers face off against the Brownies. And obviously, there's a lot going on up in Cleveland. I don't want to get too deep into those conversations. I'm not a fan of the organization. I'm not a fan of the quarterback. I'm not a fan of anything about that place, but really given it's in Ohio, worst state in America, by a wide margin. And much like our friends the Buckeyes are going to take a massive L today, Cleveland is going to take a massive L at the hands of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's finally starting to come together. This year reminds me a little bit of Brady's first year in Tampa Bay. Start off slow early, don't look that good, few bad losses, defense clicks, offense starts clicking, Buccaneers are now in control of the MC South, they're going to get a nice two, maybe even a three seed in the division or in the playoffs, and then they're going to storm through the postseason after beating up Kirk Cousins and whatnot. So the Buccaneers are getting out at the right time. They're going to demolish the Browns. Nothing more needs to be said. Well, the Buccaneers, they finally have some semblance of health on their offense. All season long, Mike Evans, you know, Mike Evans has been healthy, but Chris Godwin has been still dealing with that knee injury. Julio Jones has been injured a majority of the season. Leonard Fournette now is injured, at least at the receiver position. They're going to have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin's playing. Julio Jones is finally healthy. Scotty Miller's healthy. Russell Gage is healthy. They finally have everyone there and available for Brady to take advantage of. That offense is operating at a different level with those receivers healthy. And even though Leonard Fournette is dealing with that injury, Rashad White proved in the last game he is more than capable of being an NFL running back. So because the uh, team is finally healthy, Brady and that offense is going to start building momentum, kind of like we saw in the second half of last season. And we're going to see them start to return to the Buccaneers offenses of the last two years. On the Brown side of things, they still really only have their running game. And I think the Buccaneers defense is going to do a solid a job. All season long, I don't think we've seen the defense be as good as it can be because the offense has one of the worst possession overall average time of possession per game in the NFL. I think the Buccaneers wind up pulling this game out. Their offense is starting to look like it has in previous seasons and hopefully Brady's able to really start to turn it back around. Now, this game was played next week. It might be a little bit different because certain someone will be making his uh, dramatic return. We don't need to get into that. That is a conversation for next week. 
on to Jacksonville, where the Jaguars will be facing off against the Baltimore Ravens. This game doesn't take a rocket scientist to decipher it. The Jaguars' run defense is not phenomenal. Lamar Jackson's amazing. He's going to run out. Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be able to keep up. He showed some very solid flashes, but still has those bad throws, dumb interceptions, which are costing his team. Obviously, there's improvement. There has not been enough improvement, though, for him to be able to take on the Ravens' high-powered offense. Defensively, I think the Ravens' pass rush is the only area they are worse than the Jaguars. Their secondary is better. Their linebackers are better. So this game, not that big a deal. I think the uh, Ravens easily walk all over the Jags on this one. Maybe old Dougie boy keeps him in it to like the fourth quarter, but there's no chance Jacksonville wins this. Well, the Ravens, they're one of the most complete teams in the NFL. They do a lot of things really well. And there's going to be a lot of people that point to the Panthers game last week where they only won 13 to three. And my rebuttal to that is every single game they've played in this season has been close. All three of their losses were less than a one score game. They almost beat Miami. They almost beat the Bills. Two very elite teams. Or at least, well, you know, the Bills have kind of fallen off a little bit. Shaking but Miami, bit. Miami, very elite. And they're playing the Jaguars, who really can't seem to put everything together. One week, it's their running game. One week, it's their passing game that isn't working. One week, their offensive line looks abysmal. One week, their defense gives up a ton of points. The Ravens also have Mark Andrews back fully healthy. They're... I'd like to say consistent. Now, like I said, they they just play close games, so the score might wind up being close, but it'll be a convincing victory either way. I don't know if I would describe the Ravens as consistent. That, uh... <sighs> bit of a misnomer if you ask me, but one thing has been consistent all year, and that's the fact that Tyreek Hill and Jalen Water are the best receiving duo in the NFL by a wide, wide margin. And they get to go up against those sorry Texans quarterbacks who are young or inexperienced, who are not going to be able to deal with that 4-2 speed running straight at them. It doesn't matter who's throwing Tyreek Hill or Water in the ball. I could be throwing them the ball, and they would do just fine. But with Tua Tungvalu, a top 10 quarterback, they are going to dissect the Houston secondary. The Texans pass rush is not fast enough to get home against Miami's tackles, there's not going to be really much to say here. The Texans have benched Davis Mills. He's struggled all year. Their running game is beginning to regress now that Pierce has some film out on him. He's slowing down. There is nothing the Texans can do here. They have no shot of winning this game. They are inferior at every position besides maybe running back. It's just not fair. Dolphins are going to slaughter the Texans in Miami. This is the easiest game to predict. I mean, we see the Texans throwing in the towel on the season at this point. They're deciding to start Kyle Allen over Davis Mills. And even if Davis Mills was starting, he's not better than Tua. And they're deficient at every other position compared to the Dolphins. So easy Dolphins victory. If the Dolphins find a way to lose and Tua looks bad, that's not a good sign. Although... I don't think that's going to happen. Dolphins, Dolphins are, are undefeated when Tua starts and finishes games this year. The only loss he has as a star is when the Bengals knocked his brain out. On to a game which I am excited to talk about. And you have some strong opinions on my pal Zach Wilson. I think he hasn't been put in an amazing spot with the strength of his offensive line, him getting hit a lot. And it's a big adjustment from BYU to uh, the NFL level. Do I think he's a bust? I don't know. I think it's still a bit early. I'd like to give him one more year before I can fully be certain. We remember how bad some quarterbacks have looked. But Zach Wilson isn't even playing this game. Instead, a man is taking over for the Jets. A man who has proven in big games he can rise to the moment. A man named Mike White. And while Chicago may be on fire offensively, they may be scoring a lot of points. Justin Fields may be the best quarterback ever, according to some people. They're still a losing team right now. And the Jets are not a losing team. And they will never be a losing team if Mike White is under center for them. Their run game's good. Their run blocking is good. Their defense is good. They've got one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and he's only a rookie. Now, granted, Justin Fields can't pass the ball to save his life anyway, so his number one receiver getting taken away, not that big a deal for him. But I'm going with the New York Jets on this one. Thanks to the power of Mike White, the phenomenal Jets defense, and the spirit of New Jersey. Well, the Jets defense is one of the best in the NFL, and I think it would be even better if their offense wasn't one of the worst in the NFL when it comes to scoring points, and that has been largely because of their quarterback play. I don't want to hear this, Zach Wilson may not be a bust. He is a bust. That, that's why he's getting benched this week. That's why he threw for 70 yards last week against the Patriots. He's not good. We should have all seen it since he was coming from BYU. Now that Mike White is playing, the Jets offense is going to be better. They are going to put up points. The Bears defense is horrible. They're pathetic. They've given up 49, 35, 31, and 27 points in their last four games. Their offense is putting up 30 points, but they can't win because of how bad the defense is. So now when you also consider the fact that Justin Fields is dealing with an injury to his left shoulder, may not even play, the Bears don't really stand a chance because he is the lifeblood of that team, and the Jets defense is just so good. So the Jets 
Jets should win this game relatively easily. I don't think the Bears really have a chance, especially given Justin Fields' injury. Something I would like to say about Justin Fields, he is truly an elite talent. He's scoring a lot of points, but if you put the ball in his hands late in the game, he will find a way to go out there and lose it for you. His final four drives with a chance to win have been dreadful. That is where we are seeing his quarterback deficiencies. And while he will be a phenomenal runner for many years, assuming his health, he still has a long way to go passing the ball. And I think the regression is going to really start this week. We saw it some last week, not quite the same as his little three-week dominant stretch, and we're going to see it more this week. If he plays, he's not going to have that good of a game compared to what he's been doing. Well, like I said, it's also the Jets' defense, and when you're dealing with an injury, and he's probably not going to be running the ball as much, and you're playing a Jets' defense that is an elite pass defense, so I, it's going to be a real Don't struggle Don't need an elite pass defense to stop Justin Jefferson. Hasn't thrown for 200 yards in like five weeks. So, on to Tennessee, where we see Derrick Henry and his merry men taking on the Cincinnati Bengals, who have been ravaged by injuries offensively, but still have a somewhat stout defense. They've got good points. And look, the Titans, their record is probably not a good indication of how good they are as a team. I don't think they're one of the three best teams in the AFC. I think they're going to get blasted by a real contender come playoff time. I think the Dolphins would have their way with them. I think the Bills would smoke them. I think the Chiefs would have a very, very good game if they played Tennessee. They're not one of the better teams in the AFC, but they are going to win this game. The Bengals are not as good as they were last year. They have not captured that lightning in a bottle, and Derrick Henry remains the best running back in all football. King Henry's tyranny will extend into Week 12 as he lays waste to the sorry Bengals defense, who is going to be ravaged, rebuked, rebuttaled, and remiliated by the best runner we have seen in a decade. See, this is this is where you're just wrong about this one. And the Bengals were this team for me last year, where I hated how much they got hyped up. And look, they wound up not winning a Super Bowl. I hate how people think, especially Titans fans mostly, think the Titans are a good team. Their win resume is the Raiders, Colts, Commanders, Texans, Colts again, uh, Broncos, and Packers. None of those are good teams. None of those are impressive wins. Those are games, if you're at least a competent football team, you win. So when it comes to this game, I don't think they're going to win. The Bengals' elite passing attack is going to expose the Titans' defense, which has been propped up as one of the best defenses in the NFL over the course of the season so far. When the Titans actually played an elite quarterback, an elite passing game, Patrick Mahomes threw for 450 yards. So just imagine what Joe Burrow is going to do this week with Jamar Chase coming back healthy. He's going to throw for three, at least 350, four touchdowns, and put up over 30 points. So I think the, t- the Titans defense is going to get exposed this week. The Titans as a team are going to get exposed this week. And King Henry isn't going to even have a chance to dominate because they are going to be forced to have to keep up with Joe Burrow passing the ball. So your response to being wrong about the Titans earlier in the season is to double down and keep saying they're a bad team, even though they clearly are not. They're a, a bad mid team. team. Jamar Chase is coming back. He might not be healthy. Joe Mixon's not playing. I like how he didn't even mention that. That's where I have uh, some limiting impact on the offense. And the Titans still have a very good pass rush. Oh, they beat bad teams where it props their defense. Bad news for you, son. Everyone's going to get routed by the Chiefs offensively this year. Unless, of course, you're the Indianapolis Colts. I think you're just bitter about some previous takes. I think you're upset our boy Jackie owns you. And that's really coming out of the prediction here. They're not going to win. So little faith. On to the wonderful city of Washington, where their owner may be leaking certain pictures of Jerry Jones, but we don't need to get into that. We don't need to get into that. Instead, we're going to get into the football game. And this game, it's garbage versus trash. The Falcons, they've struggled all year. Kyle Pitts hasn't been able to, or not been able to, live up to the expectations of last season. He's hurt now. Their passing game, dreadful. Mariota's an amazing runner of the football at the quarterback position, but it's pretty apparent why he's been a backup for so long, and they just can't really get anything. Their defense, also mid. Then you've got the Commanders, who is scary in terms of their front seven. Their cornerback safety's lacking. Their run game, eh, it's alright. And they got Taylor Heineken like throwing the football for them. They're not that good. They may still somehow sneak into the playoffs because wins are wins a win, but it's not going to be a good game. I'm going to give this one to the Commanders. Their running game is comparably developed, and whatever you want to say about Heineke or Wentz, whoever winds up playing, they're better than Mariota slinging the ball, and Scary Terry's better than Drake London. So I'm going to give this one to the Commanders. The Commanders have become a different football team with Taylor Heineke back there taking starts for them and throwing touchdowns. Their offense has been playing inspired football. Their defense has also been playing better with Taylor Heineke on the field. Their offense went from averaging 17 points a game with Wentz to 22 and a half points a game with Taylor Heineke as a starter, which in my opinion is a significant difference. Almost a touchdown there, and although their offense still isn't all that great, and when you compare them to the Falcons, there isn't anything the Falcons really do all that great. I mean, they have a very solid running game, but their passing game is awful, and their defense is also awful. So, 
The Commanders have Scary Terry, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson has been finally worked back into the game plan. They have Bijan Robinson, who is that power running back. So I think the Commanders win this game relatively easily. And the Fal- like you said, the Falcons don't even have Kyle Pitts, who unfortunately they didn't utilize like they should this season. But I think it's sh- I think it'll be an easy win for the Commanders. Really should not be that difficult. Speaking of not difficult games, the 49ers absolutely spanked the Arizona Cardinals last week, and they might be due for another spanking. Now, sure, the world may be falling down in LA. The Chargers may have been ravaged by Andrews Fields, or excuse me, Herbert may be underperforming a little bit, but he's still better than Kyler Murray. Their offense is still comparable. They're still going to put up points. Their defense, while underachieving, still better than Arizona's. And little Kyler has just been ravaged. He's at home playing 2K, playing Call of Duty with his family on Thanksgiving. He's not watching any film. He's not getting better. In fact, he may be getting worse. Diop's upset, Kingsbury's upset, and all in all, the Cardinals off is just uninspired, which is sad to say, so everyone thought Kyler was going to be a top 10 quarterback and really going to make some magic happen with Hopkins once he came back. So I'm giving this one to the Chargers. They're the better team, better quarterback, better coached, and play less video games. Well, to be fair to the to Kyler Murray a little bit, he has missed two games because of his hamstring injury, so he has been hurt. But the Cardinals, their problem comes down to their coaching and just how they play football. They flat out gave up versus the 49ers. It is like they didn't even try. They lost 38 to 10. That is embarrassing. And I don't want to hear, oh, Kyler wasn't out there because Colt McCoy, in my opinion, is a solid quarterback who, with all the weapons you have on that offense, DeAndre Hopkins, James Conner is a solid running back. Ronda Moore may not have been playing, but AJ Green, all those guys they have, they have solid weapons. You're not able to put up any more points than that. It's sad. When you look at a good coach, you look at what the Giants were able to accomplish versus the Cowboys. Cowboys only lost by eight points, have injuries to your entire secondary, have injuries on your offensive line, have injuries everywhere. Practically no one is even playing and and the Giants scored 20 points against the best defense in the NFL. So the Cardinals are sad. The Chargers finally have Keenan Allen back. Austin Eckler has been phenomenal all season long. Justin Herbert is Justin Herbert. So it's, it's an easy win for the Chargers with when how you the say Cardinals have been solid playing. quarterback, like what do you mean by that? Solid backup. Solid, solid, solid okay, backup. There you go. Solid quarterback. I think it's not like maybe Geno Smith, although Geno Smith is certainly better than solid. In fact, he is not just solid. He is rock solid. He is the rock the Seattle Seahawks needed in these troubling times. He takes coaching. He listens. He follows the plays. And he has got this offense to heights that Mr. Unlimited never quite could. Kenneth Walker's on fire. DK Metcalf is still an elite receiver. Tyler Lockett is going down after every single reception, but he's still getting 10 yards of reception. Their defense, eh, who cares about defense? Defense does not win you championships when you got Geno Smith under center. On the other sideline, you've got the Raiders. And it looks like Carr's sad. Devontae Adams might be done for the season. The Raiders are falling apart. Their coaching staff is in shambles. And some would say, hey, this is an easy win for the Seahawks. I wouldn't go quite that far. I don't think they're going to run away with it, but I do think Seattle pulls up a big win here. They're fighting for control of the tough NFC West with the 49ers, and I think this game right here might give them the slight edge. But we'll get into my 49ers prediction later. The Seahawks are 4-1 over their last five games. Their defense has been very good, isn't giving up a lot of points, and it is really difficult. Isaiah, you made this point when we were making the prediction for their Buccaneers game. They had to travel all the way to London last week, and as a team that's from the West Coach, that is much more difficult to do, and they were playing on a not-so-great surface. So uh, the Seahawks are a great team this season, and when we look at what the Raiders have done, three of their wins, two against the Broncos, one against the Texans. So they're not beating good teams. Their defense is horrible. They're giving up a ton of points, and when you're playing the Seahawks, who have Kenneth Walker, they have Geno Smith, they have DK, they have Tyler Lockett, uh, Marquise Goodwin has been making plays this season. It's an easy win for the Seahawks. The Raiders' defense is pathetic, and they're offense, I don't think is going to do much in comparison to the Seahawks. Seahawks country, let's fly. On to Kansas City. And... I feel bad in a way for the Rams, how a team which was once someone's Super Bowl favorite, mini Super Bowl favorite, now just looks like a squad of losers, washed up old men, Aaron Donald still a bum, Jalen Ramsey getting toasted by every, Sean McVay's probably going to retire in a week and a half, and you know, I'd want to retire too after I got whooped by about 80 points like the Chiefs are going to do to him. The Rams' defense is uninspiring. On their sideline, you have the Kansas City offense, which is surging. Travis Kelsey, clearly the best tight end in football. I don't care he's not an amazing luck. He is legitimately a top three receiver in the NFL. It's him and Justin Jefferson fighting for the top of that hill with Tyreek Hill right next to him, of course. He is an elite receiver. They got Isaiah Pacheco, who is a phenomenal young running back. Their passing game is balanced. They throw it to a lot of people. Their running game is deceptively good. Their offensive line is rock solid, and their defense will certainly be able to contain Matthew Stafford and his noodle arm, particularly with no Cooper Cup. This is one of the easiest games I have ever predicted. The Chiefs are going to slaughter the Rams. 
in Sunday afternoon. Well, with all the injuries the Rams have suffered, they don't have a chance at beating anyone this season. They now have the worst offense in the NFL. For some reason, they even released Daryl Henderson, who is their best running back, which isn't saying much. Their offensive line, horrible. They generate no push in the run game. Their receivers, they now don't have Cooper Cup. They're asking a uh, washed up Allen Robinson to be that guy. He hasn't even been able to be the number two receiver all season. And when you're playing Patrick Mahomes leading the number one scoring offense in the NFL, and you've no, no, you no capability of scoring two touchdowns on offense you don't have a chance at winning if the rams win it would be one of the biggest upsets all season even though the game would be meaningless well it means something to the folks in la it means they didn't get to be made fun of by me for a week but i'm saving my heavy slander for the united kingdom at the moment so they're getting off a bit easy on to the 49ers game which i previously mentioned and look san francisco's got arguably the best teams in the nfl their offense has elite weapons their quarterback is a game manager and they've got great coaching on the other sideline you've got an inexperienced coach leading andy Dahl an offensive line which is shaky and a defense which is the opposite of stout. Which is why many people are going to be shocked when I'm going to come out here and tell you Alvin Kamara, thanks to Jameis Winston coming in for an injured Andy Dalton, is going to take over this game. Olave will be there to help him. Landry will be there to help him. That offense is going to start clicking. And it's going to be able to do just enough against a rock solid 49ers defense to keep up with little Jimmy Garoppolo and his noodle arm. And I don't mean plan, I mean keep up. The 49ers and the Saints are going to tie, I'm going to say, 33 points apiece this week. I am predicting a tie. <laughs> Elite dynamic take. Lock we it love in. Lock dy- it in. <laughs> Go dynamic- to Vegas. <laughs> The dynamic take of the week. And the 49ers, they really are one of the most talented teams in the NFL. I mean, you look what they have on the offensive side of the ball. They have an all-pro tight end, an all-pro receiver, an all-pro left tackle, an all-pro running back. Brandon Ayuk has finally emerged. Their defense is one of the best, if not the best, in the NFL. But their quarterback is Jimmy G, which greatly brings them down. If they had any of the top five, top ten guys, I think they'd be widely considered the Super Bowl favorite this season, especially with having Kyle Shanahan also as their coach. So for this game, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to go quite that dynamic this week. I think the 49ers are going to win. The Saints have, you know, Andy Dalton starting. Michael Thomas hasn't played in six weeks. He's done for the season. They don't have the firepower to keep up with the 49ers talent they have. Jameis Winston has a starting job stolen by an injury, Tristan. I don't care about Anthony Usat. I just know he will be reclaiming what he has stolen. I don't know if Andy Dalton's going to get hurt. I don't know if he's going to get turfed. I don't know if he's going to tear his ACL. I hope, he, hope he's fine but he will not finish this game. James Winston will finish the game and then take a nice big old mouthful of a W. <laughs> it's coming. You know, you on to, to Sunday night, where the Philadelphia Eagles take on the middling Green Bay Packers. And I hate both of these teams. The people of Philadelphia are scumbags, degenerates. They don't know how to handle victories. They don't know how to handle losses. They've got bad home lives. They come from alcoholic households. The homes are broken. It's basically Detroit over there. On the other sideline, you've got the alcoholics in Green Bay who have nothing better to do but drink all day, eat cheese, and watch their middling franchise and Ar- ayahuasca fueled quarterback go on rants in the Joe Rogan podcast. Aaron Rodgers is a loser, a bum, and a fraud. He has been terrible all year. He can't connect with six foot five wide receivers because he keeps short arming everything. He is hindering the run game by his mere presence and taking carries away from Jones and Dylan, and he will not be able to do anything to the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't care the Eagles almost lost to the Indianapolis Colts. Jeff Saturday is a great coach. He has that locker room behind him. He is a better coach than the Fleur. He is a better coach than many people in the NFL. But Jalen Hurts is a freak. He's an athletic specimen. He is a god amongst men at the quarterback position. He is an Adonis. He's throwing the better receivers. He's got a better running game. He's got a better offensive line. The best offensive line. Their defense is better. They are just superior to the Green Bay Packers in every way, shape, or form. Much like Jalen Hurts is a superior man to Aaron Rodgers in every way, shape, or form. Eagles went 85 against the Green Bay Packers this week. You heard her book, 85. <laughs> Well, the Packers have only won one game over their last seven games, which came against the Cowboys, and I don't even think you can really chalk that up to a team win, because Aaron Rodgers just owns the Cowboys at this point. Every time he plays the Cowboys, he pulls their pants down on national television and beats them. He beats them every single time, and it's not really a marker that they have any chance of turning their season around. Their passing game has not been all that great. Their defense hasn't been good this year. The Eagles have one of the best offensive systems in the NFL, and when it comes to the Colts game, 
game and when it comes to the commanders game teams are not they're going to have bad games this season not every team is the 2000 what is it, 2007 patriots who then eventually had their bad game in the super bowl so I, the eagles are going to win this game i will say the one path to victory for the packers is the eagles run defense is not that good jordan davis is still not coming back so if they're able to get aaron jones going and aj dillon going on the ground maybe they're able to create a path to victory but the eagles secondary is phenomenal best in the I'm nfl wrong. they create turnovers and their offense is great so i, I am picking the eagles to win but i do see a path to victory for the correct Packers. correct me if i'm wrong did the eagles not just go out there and sign namakon sue they did i yes yeah I there you so. go there's their run defense now say what you want about sue also a scumbag and a degenerate fits great with the people of philadelphia love stepping on little children's heads but he is a good run defender that might have solved their interior running game issue right there on to sunday night and it's time for you to admit you were wrong about jeff saturday because you can say a lot of things about him he's inexperienced he's only coached in high school before he's not really able to uh work with the talented roster the colts kind of stink but he's got that locker room behind him he has them fighting for every single game and sure he could have managed the final minute or so of the eagles game a little bit better blew it a little bit of a lead eagles are one of the best teams in the nfl they're a phenomenal team and the colts barely lost to him they beat the raiders this team is hopping thanks to jeff saturday coaching really doesn't matter the x's nose don't matter the play call really doesn't matter you got coordinators for that what matters is getting people believe that's why i think dan campbell's a good coach despite some of his limitations he has his team who is one of the least talented rosters in the nfl particularly defensively fighting for every single game and jeff saturday reminds me of dan campbell in that way he's got these colts teams fighting but you don't need to fight against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mike Tom. He's a great coach, top 10, maybe top 5 in the league. He can't do it this year. He's got a little and Kenny Pickett. He's got Mitch Trubisky, the MVP. Their offense is lacking. They trade away their second best receiver. Najee Harris can't run straight. Their offensive line regressed. And the only good part about their defense is TJ Watt, who's thankfully back and thrive. I think it'll be a close game. That's just the nature of these two teams and their lackluster offense. But I'm giving this one to the home team, the Indianapolis Colts, and I'm Jeff Saturday, who will make you eat your words forever doubting him. Well, that was, that was a nice little monologue you had there Isaiah I, I appreciate it and I understand the Colts have been re-energized by Jeff Saturday now leading the way at head coach but at the end of the day like you said they're not a very talented football team and the Steelers they have their star back they have TJ Watt he is the lifeblood of their team since he's been back they beat the Saints and then against the Bengals with him back on the team although the Bengals put up 37 the Steelers offense finally became functional and put up 30 points so not Najee Harris also finally remembered how to play since TJ Watt has been back. So I know he only plays on the defensive side of the ball, but with him back on that field, I think the Steelers are playing much so you more inspired TJ's football. on the sideline pointing north. Go, go, Najee, go, Najee, that way. No, 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 don't go sideways. That is exactly that? what he's doing. He is inspiring that team, much like Jeff Saturday taking over the Colts has re-inspired what talent they have left on that roster. So I think... With TJ Watt being back, he's going to, they're going to find a way to, they're going to find a way, they're going to beat the Colts, and they're going to get back on the path of recapturing Mike Tomlin's streak of staying at 500 or above, although he can't be 500 because there's an odd number of games now. So I think the Steelers are going to win this game and they're going to start a hot streak with See, what you're failing to talk about in terms of motivational talent, because the Pro Bowl measures this a little bit to me. TJ Watt, four-time Pro Bowl are very impressive. I've never made the Pro Bowl once. Jeff Saturday, six-time Pro Bowl. Six Pro Bowls. That is two more Pro Bowlers worth of motivation. So in a battle of pure motivation, Jeff Saturday has the edge. You want to make an argument about a more talented roster? Whatever. But motivationally speaking, Saturday's got him beat. If you want, if you want to roll with that, be my guest. I'm rolling with Jeff on this one. That is about our predictions for week 12. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Any likes, comments, subscribe, shares, tremendously appreciate. If you're still here listening, you rock, you're awesome, you're a good person, or you really must not like us. We will see you folks next week.